Nuclear power plant operators in Japan have announced they will scrap two aging reactors. That brings to five the number of reactors to be decommissioned, aside from those at Fukushima Daiichi, since the nuclear accident four years ago. Directors of the Chugoku Electric Power Company say they will scrap a reactor at their Shimane plant in Shimane Prefecture. And board members of Kyushu Electric Power Company have decided to decommission a reactor at the Genkai plant in Saga Prefecture. The executives decided it would be too expensive to upgrade the reactors to meet new regulations. Both facilities had a relatively small output. The government introduced tougher regulations after the Fukushima accident in 2011. All nuclear reactors in Japan are offline. While the people who run Kyushu Electric shut down one, one reactor, they are looking to restart another. The plant in Kagoshima Prefecture in southern Japan could be up and running as early as June. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has approved equipment designed for Sendai Nuclear Plant's number one reactor. The plants involve an assessment of earthquake and tsunami resistance. The utility must next apply for an NRA site inspection. That process could take more than two months, considering how long the reactor has been idle. The plant's number one and two reactors became the first in Japan to clear the new tougher regulations in September. Many businesses were seriously affected by the March 11th disaster in 2011. Factories, communications and infrastructure were damaged. Some realized that they had to change their business model. And as a result, they're now better prepared for disasters. NHK World's Yuta Seki has more. Workers at this Renesis Electronics plant produce microcontrollers for car engines. Employees had to stop production after the March 11th disaster. It took six months to fully resume operations. The plant building itself avoided serious damage. But racks that held power cables in place shook loose. The cables dropped, leaving the plant without power. The metal parts fixing the racks to the ceiling weren't strong enough, so the plant ground to a halt. 
We never expected this. We cannot make our products without power, air, gas and water. This is our Achilles heel. The firm spent about $82 million to reinforce the rugs and other parts at 12 factories across the country. The company has also changed its strategy. It started keeping stockpiles of parts and materials, something it didn't do before. Having these stockpiles as backup now means it can continue operating after a major disaster. All this raised costs, but management decided to place a higher priority on being better prepared. We don't want to keep stock, but we must think about the best way to hedge our risks. Our decision was that we should keep backup stocks. The disaster also opened the eyes of managers at NTT East. Engineers at the telecom company are now working to improve their communications infrastructure. The firm digitizes patients' medical records for hospitals and clinics. The tsunami damaged all the data saved in the server. The data loss created serious problems for our clients. We tried to restore the information, but once it was lost, there was no way to recover it. So a local doctor's association and others came up with the idea of keeping the data outside the hospitals. The digitized medical records were placed for safekeeping in an online cloud system. The system allows any hospital or pharmacist to access a patient's medical records if the patient grants them permission. When the system was launched two years ago, about 70 medical institutions had access. Starting next month, it will expand across the prefecture, with 500 institutions taking part. Japan is expected to face another natural disaster in the future. We believe it is our mission to make sure we're prepared and to expand this network nationwide. Business people are advancing their preparations for another disaster. Together with their clients, they hope to develop systems that can stand up to any eventuality. Ryu Taseki, NHK World.